Today we're going to talk about how anyone can become even more creative using five simple training activities. Welcome to the Idea to Value podcast, where in every episode we highlight the latest insights into creativity and innovation from experts around the world. I'm your host, Nick Skillicorn. I care about the evidence behind what makes ideas happen, and I've already helped thousands of people just like you through my unique insights into recent scientific findings of how creativity works. I also show you how to turbocharge innovation programs so they finally deliver on the value and ideas you've been struggling to execute. Get your free training on how creativity can be improved by registering now at www.ideatovalue.com. Now let's get on with today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second episode of the Idea to Value podcast with me, Nick Skillicorn. Now, for anyone who listened to the first episode about why so many people are frustrated with the concept of creativity and feel that they're not that creative, I've got great news because today's going to be around what sort of things you can do to actually improve your creative ability. And uh, the reason I think this is so important is a lot of people seem to believe that uh, your creative ability is fixed from birth. Whereas what I found from all of my research about the studies out there, there's actually a lot of individual things that you can do in order to become not only better at coming up with ideas for a specific challenge, but for all sorts of challenges that happen in the background of your mind, whether uh, whether you're at work or whether you're asleep or doing uh, exercise or any of those sorts of things. And what I found is there's fundamentally five different types of activities which really have the biggest benefit on anyone being able to become more creative over time. And it's these five activities that I want to go through with you today. And the first one, which is based on the research out there about how creativity actually works, is about scheduling some time in your day every day for you to become a bit less focused. I call this 15 minutes of unfocused time every day. And the reason I say unfocused time is that, as I mentioned in previous episodes, your brain's got two sorts of energy levels when it comes to being creative. It can either focus on a challenge and use what's called convergent creativity to take lots of options and refine them down to a final, more refined, beautiful solution. Or if you're in a less focused state where the brain's not quite as active, Uh, it allows the brain to think of more divergent ideas. And divergent ideas are what we refer to as being the more original ideas, the uh, the sort of ideas that seem to spark from your unconscious in this moment of insight that a lot of people call the eureka moment. Because of the way that a lot of us work nowadays, we're actually spending more time in this high-energy focus state than our brain is used to being. So uh, what we should be doing every now and again is enable ourselves to slow down a bit and allow the parts of the brain which are essentially being filtered out by this focused activity from getting a bit of energy and uh, getting the sort of time they need to do their work. The way that I recommend people do this is to spend 15 minutes every day at some point during the day not focusing on anything. And what I mean by this is not focusing on a computer screen, uh, not focusing on a phone screen, not focusing on uh, answering emails or having a conversation with a person or looking at a TV screen or reading a book or essentially doing anything that requires you to focus. And 15 minutes, when you actually try it out, might actually feel a little bit uncomfortable because we're so used now to wanting to avoid this feeling of boredom and feeling like we need to constantly be productive and constantly be doing something useful, that when you switch off all of these distractions and allow yourself to essentially have your mind wander a bit, which is what this 15 minutes of unfocused time is meant to do, it can actually be a bit jarring for some people since they don't allow themselves to do it that often. Uh, And the easy way to overcome this is to schedule in those 15 minutes during times of the day when you would otherwise be doing the sorts of things that don't require your focus anyway. So a good example of this is if you're uh, on your way to get something for lunch, make sure that while you're walking out, uh, I don't know what, what you do for lunch, but in London, quite common, it's quite common for you to go out and buy a sandwich. So just make sure during this time when you're walking to buy a sandwich and buying the sandwich and coming back to your desk, Uh, You're not checking your phone at this point, you're not uh, necessarily having a conversation with anyone at this point, and you're essentially just allowing your mind to start wandering a bit. 
And this just allows your brain to activate the subconscious a bit more uh, effectively and to get the sort of energy where it needs to be to get these divergent ideas. Try and focus on having 15 minutes of unfocused time, if that makes sense. Now, another thing which also seems to work is when you're trying to actually do something with your ideas and turn them into actual solutions. So this is when you're essentially trying to solve problems with your creativity. And what has happened uh, recently is that people, as I said earlier, are putting more and more emphasis on being busy rather than being productive. And what this ends up uh, with is people who spend all days in meetings uh, working for eight, nine, ten hours a day, but at the end of the day, having this feeling that, oh my god, I haven't actually achieved anything today, and now I've got twice as much to do tomorrow. And the reason this happens is people spend their time doing unproductive things instead of setting out the actual challenges that they need to be working on that actually require them to come up with some sort of creative solution. So the second thing you should be doing on a daily basis is thinking what challenges do I actually have that are going to require me to essentially solve them? And actually write out this challenge. And then for that challenge, actually write out a couple of ideas. And uh, if you do this on one day, uh, then try out some of these ideas during the day. It sometimes can be as simple as, I have to write a paragraph for this, and then the idea that you write down is the actual paragraph draft that you need to do. And then uh, you can look at it and say, okay, I need to wordsmith this, I need to uh, refine it a little bit, but then your your task is done. Whereas other times you actually have slightly more challenging tasks that require a bit more abstract thought uh, that you'll list out one day and you can think of a couple of things you want to try, which are your ideas, and that you then actually go out and try. But the secret here is actually do the work to list out a couple of ideas and try them out. And then the next day, if the challenge hasn't been solved yet, try out some different ideas. So look at what you've previously tried. Say, this hasn't worked. What else can I try? And it's this sort of way of actively thinking about what challenges you're working on. Uh, it keeps it in the forefront of your mind, and it, it really helps your brain to continue working in the background to think of more and more and more creative solutions to this challenge. So eventually, even the biggest challenge uh, will get a extremely creative solution which you hadn't thought of was uh, being possible the first time that you wrote down the challenge. So that's the second thing you should be doing on a daily basis. Um, the third thing you should be doing on a daily basis is something that I found out uh, through my through my research, which is how can we actually help people overcome the mental barriers that they have towards being creative? And uh, these barriers are the th sort of things that I've talked about in the previous podcast episode. It's the things that happen since childhood or going through school or going through work where you've been trained to just give the correct answer all the time. And this puts up what I call a comfort barrier between producing memories and boring ideas and then there being a comfort barrier before your brain is willing to go into more uncharted territory and actually come up with pretty creative, new, original ideas. How do we overcome that challenge? And the best way that I've thought about this is to actually challenge your brain to be creative on a daily basis. So literally do a set of creativity exercises every day. And when I say creativity exercises, I mean challenges that don't necessarily have a correct answer. So challenges where the brain is actually being tasked to come up with as many different original ideas as possible without looking for the correct answer, because that's not the purpose. And uh, up until recently, this hasn't actually existed. And I saw demand for it, so I created what's called the Deep Creativity Training Sequence, uh, on the idea to value website, which if you listen uh, up until the end of the podcast, you can get a discount coupon if you're interested in that. But essentially the way it works is every day you'll get three different creativity challenges, uh, which last anywhere between a total of six minutes and a total of 15 minutes. But they just challenge your brain every day to essentially break out of its mold, break out of its box, and actually try and be as creative as possible. 
but every day you just get challenged uh, to think of as many different cr uh, creative original ideas as possible. And then when you encounter new challenges in your actual work and personal life, your brain is much more willing to push past that initial comfort barrier. And actually it becomes a lot easier to come up with significantly more creative ideas in any situation. So those three activities are the sort of things that you should be doing on a daily basis to actually become more creative over time, both actively when thinking about challenges and helping your brain uh, do the sort of creative work in the background to be more divergent. But what else can you do to help your creativity over the long term? Well, there's a couple of things there as well. Um, on a weekly basis, you should be doing things to uh, gain new experiences and new knowledge and uh, essentially get as much variety into your life as possible. And this is advice that uh, I've taken based on the research by Dr. Simone Ritter, who tried to figure out how new experiences uh, affect creativity in people. And what she did was she set a challenge for some students at her university to come and do a, a creativity test. Um, but before they were allowed into the laboratory, they were told to make themselves a very typical Dutch sandwich, which is chocolate sprinkles on a sandwich. And apparently every child knows, take a piece of bread, put some butter on it, put some chocolate sprinkles on it. And it's a, a delicious treat in Holland, which I'll admit I don't understand as being that tasty, but it's a big hit over there. So the students went and did that. And then several days later, they came back to do the creativity test again. But this time they were given instructions on how to make this same sandwich differently. And they were told this time, spread some chocolate sprinkles on a piece of bread, uh, on, a, on a plate, put the butter on the piece of bread and then press down the piece of bread into the pile of sprinkles and turn it back upside down. And you have exactly the same sandwich with chocolate sprinkles on butter on bread. But it's this difference in the way that they uh, were told to approach this situation that they hadn't experienced before, which had a radical effect on their creativity in the subsequent creativity tasks. And in fact, it led to them being up to 14% on average more creative in whatever creativity challenge they were set afterwards. So it's just this little trigger of trying things in a different way that actually seems to trigger you being more creative in any activity you do later on. So make sure that you just essentially put yourself in new situations and new varied experiences as often as possible. Now, for most people, the appropriate uh, number of times to do this is approximately once a week because people have things that they need to do during the days, but once a week, more or less, everyone can do something that they haven't done previously. And it can be as simple as going to see a new exhibition, going to a new restaurant. Some people start as simply as ordering a new menu item from the same restaurant that they haven't tried before, but anything that you feel is fundamentally different from what you've done previously, it counts as being one of these triggers. And the, the there's essentially two reasons why this works. Number one, it immediately in the short term breaks people out of their routines and habits and therefore essentially gives their brain permission to be creative. And the second thing is the more variety and new experiences and new knowledge that you have, the more new combinations the brain can form subconsciously between these new pieces of information. And if you think of every idea growing out of several seeds of information your brain has stored away, uh, there'll essentially be many, many more different seeds that can combine in new and creative ways that the brain can then access. So this is something you should do on a weekly basis. Just make sure you're going out there and doing different varied things. It'll have a huge effect on the way that you approach creative problems. And then the final thing, which is really, really of benefit to people who don't feel that they're that creative to start with, is something that you should do on a monthly basis which is to essentially have a creative project that you do on a monthly basis, but just for yourself. And the reason I say it's just for yourself is this is not a creative project that's meant to become something you exhibit to other people or something you sell for additional income. This is just you proving that every month you can produce something creative and actually finish it. And that's why these should be tiny little things uh, such as a blog post or writing a chapter in a novel you might be working on for the more advanced people or starting very, very simply just a limerick 
or um, a, a series of photographs that you arrange in a creative way, or if you're into coding a new little JavaScript code, or if you're into woodworking, a shelf, just anything that you say, I made something this month. I actually produced something and I finished it. And then next month, I'm going to finish something else. And it's essentially this uh, making a habit out of creating things on a regular basis. Because this shows people that you don't have to work towards perfection. You don't have to try and please everyone with uh, the, the greatest work of art in the world. Instead, all you need to do is make sure that you're actually executing on an idea on a regular basis. And this can have a transformative effect on people who don't necessarily start off with confidence in their own creativity. It's just little tiny steps. Every month, produce something, no matter how small. Uh, and then the next month, just try a little bit something differently or try to make the next version a little better. Just try and build on each month that came previously and it can have huge effects on your desire to actually not only express your creativity but also just try new things in your work life try new things in your personal life they won't all end up being masterpieces but some of them will end up being significantly better than what you thought was possible previously so in a nutshell those are the five activities which everyone should be doing on a monthly basis Number one, 15 minutes of unfocused time every day. Number two, listing out the challenges you're working on and the ideas you're willing to try for them. Number three, actually doing some creativity exercises every day. Number four, making sure that on a weekly basis you have variety and new experiences and uh, you're essentially getting new knowledge to form new ideas from. And the fifth one is actually setting yourself the challenge of executing some idea in a mini creative project every month. And if you do all five of those activities, you'll see a huge increase in your not only uh, ability to generate ideas, but your willingness to try out new things and actually show the world what you're capable of. In the next episode, we're going to talk about what makes up a really high performing innovation team and how those teams can make the most of their ideas. So I look forward to seeing you there. Today's episode was made possible by members of our premium deep creativity training program. For less than the price of half a candy bar per day, you too can get world-exclusive daily exercises which push your creativity past its comfort barrier to make you better able to generate ideas in all aspects of your life and work. Invest in yourself now by going to www.ideatovalue.com slash deepcreativity and using coupon code PODCAST for 25% off your first order. And don't forget that if you found this episode interesting, to like and share it, and to leave us a review in your favorite podcast player. See you again in the next episode.